Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about approaches. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what approach do you prefer to use? Feature flags or feature branches? Well, uh, I, I su I'm not going to be difficult with you now, but uh, because technically this could mean two things, but uh, I usually go with feature flags or feature branches, but we use feature branches because I am a strong believer in a trunk-based uh, development style. Uh, but you do still have feature branches, but I'm assuming now that you're talking about deployment strategies and that's the, you know, you have branches that, sh that you deploy in order to test things and then you revert, etc, etc. So the reason why I say that is more is mostly because uh, you can still have a feature branch, like well, if you have some code you want to try out or so forth, uh, you can pull that out and push it to a QA environment or something like that. That's absolutely a viable strategy. The, the reason I don't like that so much is because basically it doesn't save you from the fundamental problem of having broken code, uh, which is that you you can still push something to an environment and still bring it like bring that thing down. Uh, or you create a bug or a problem and then you have to do a rollback which is still a disruption to the workflow of your application uh, to the well to the users of the application and this is it's actually funny because this is something that I've been coaching uh, well, a while back now a team into understanding I didn't really at that because it's like they're they're basically so completely married to the idea of QA environments and uh, doing pre-testing that they don't understand that, that that's actually not good enough for some systems. Because the reality is that uh, something can work flawlessly in your QA environment. But if that QA environment is not practically identical to the setup that you have in production, you can still bring down the entire system, which happened more than once. And the idea is, like, I actually promoted that idea that, all right, because we are so shit at this, let's try to use feature flagging and let's actually remove the QA environment. So now you have to know how to release something into production in a safe manner. That didn't work so well because the, the reality was that uh, the team didn't really organically adopt feature flagging they seem to struggle with the concept and like how it works and what the idea behind it is because it requires and this is the big problem with feature flagging it requires a different way of working a different way of thinking as things as a way of working that is seems unnatural to some software developers which is super frustrating I imagine it's the same frustration that people who want to promote TDD like what they have and I sometimes I just I basically shock this down to that uh, this is so quote unquote advanced to do that the average software developer does not possess the skills to do it effectively and so the investment that I usually make in this unfortunately I couldn't do this at the current time because I had too many other responsibilities is that uh, the ideally the person who has a fairly good handle on feature flagging uh, sits down and writes a tiny little set a library or a, a small framework of uh, uh, of functions uh, and uh, tooling and uh, an ops setup that allows feature flagging to be done in a fairly seamless manner and then you'd co you basically train the team into using those interfaces um, in the correct manner uh, because once that's when they once they have adjusted it to the workflow once it's sort of like you you can train people to learn how to use an SBA framework like react or something like that but you might not be able to train them to efficiently build the same application in all vanilla JavaScript even though that is what might have been required at you know back in the day and so forth because there there are different levels of complexity and the reality is always that you have different skills skill levels on the software developers and the average software developers uh, software developer will always find feature branches easier to work with than feature flags 
so the this is one of those sort of situations where I almost go and say that I try to avoid pushing feature flags on teams uh, the, the reason being more because I, I know that for the vast majority of them they won't be able to adjust, make the adjustment if someone can't adjust to doing test driven development for example it's, it's, it's the same thing you can say that this is what we're going to do the reality is that it's very difficult to have, to make that happen and if you have as I said the time to invest in, in order to make this work I think that it's the best solution because feature flagging actually accounts for all environments regardless of its product it doesn't matter which environment you're dealing with it also is instantaneously when set up that in other words you can you can basically nullify in theory you can nullify uh, well all downtime and it brings a lot of capabilities that feature branches simply does not bring with it uh, so as a rule I would say that if you can make feature flagging work for you and you know how to do it efficiently then you should go with it uh, I can't imagine okay, because I mean it is uh, at least from my perspective easier to have a set of features that you can toggle on or off whenever you feel like it then it is to keep track of a feature branch that lives and you know depending on how you use the feature branch i've had some scenarios which i truly despised where you you basically have version branches which is absolutely terrible where you're like certain environments have certain feature branches and they need to be updated with master continuously because you can't release them willy-nilly because that environment is on version so and so that environment is a few little bit further ahead almost at master so that has to be in a certain version so you're in this constant state that whenever you do a release you have to go to the different branches calculate how many commits you can add to that branch to what version you can bump it to update that branch and then the next one and the next one and if you, especially if you have a lot of environments that's like it's tons of work to keep all of that synchronized and god forbid if you find a bug in all three of those branches and now you have to do a hot fix in three different branches uh, and make sure that you don't overcommit the version or something like that so th these are very complicated matters which are in my opinion very troublesome to deal with uh, but when it comes to regular feature flags uh, you can actually solve that in a more efficient manner because you can be on the latest code and simply have feature flags that determine what version of the whatever feature you're dealing with is on, off, or disabled, or whatever strategy that you're picking, right? So what I want you to take away from this is that uh, I prefer to use feature flags over feature branches, although we use I use both, like or we can call them story branches, because I, it, as I said, it is semantics. But uh, I don't really enjoy having feature branches as a rule. The reason why we have it, yeah, I have it in some teams, is because it's the simplest thing that the software developers are. Uh, feel uh, comfortable with usually uh, because feature flagging takes adjustment in, of your workflow which is an adjustment that most uh, for the f first and foremost most software developers don't know about feature flagging and how to use it uh, and second is as I said it requires you to think in a different way when you release things because you're not just pushing new code and then praying that it works you are pushing an interface towards a user where there is a backwards compatibility and usually an AB thing going on where you you're basically releasing new code into an environment trying it out with like toggle it on and then toggling it back immediately if it doesn't work and there are more advanced functionalities of course where you can like pin it so that only you see it or like there are so many different strategies related to this and I can't go through through them in this little video of mine but there's a lot of flexibility a lot of uh, like approaches to doing this really really well and I personally think that these are very very good practices to adopt and the teams that do make this work basically have a fairly st fairly strong safety net for anything that they, uh, they develop it's just that as I said my experience uh, tells me that the average software team like this is too advanced for them I tried it with more than a few teams and it can work but unless you have someone who really knows how to do this well and can train the the team to learn how to do it it's sort of like test driven development it's something that 
it's it's never going to happen on its own it requires a special type of uh, individual and like practice and like changing of workflows and the rea reality is that for most developers uh, it's better in my opinion for team happiness to find a sweet spot between this is really really good this is like the ideal of what we want to do this is easy enough that everybody understands how to do it and then sort of just pick the thing that is easy enough so that the developers can make progress because trust me when I say this you can tell everybody that you're going to use for feature flagging that doesn't matter uh, if they don't know how to do it and because then it's useless have a great day